The claim by the followers of Muhammad for Jerusalem as their third holiest place is founded on the interpretation of the following verse. Glory to Allah, who did take his servant for, a, for journey by night from the sacred mosque to the farthest mosque. Are these interpretations true, factual, historical? The story of the night journey is copied like most of the important stories of the Quran from the traditions of the Jews regarding the ascent of Moses to the seven heavens and visiting paradise and hell. Muhammad in his Quran changed several items to suit the Arabian mind. Isra is the name of Surah 17, which is also called Bani Israel, the children of Israel. It is the alleged nocturnal journey from Mecca to the furthest mosque mentioned in chapter 17, verse 1. Glory to Allah, who did take his servant for journey, Asra, by night from the sacred mosque, Al-Masjid Al-Haram, to the furthest mosque, Al-Masjid Al-Aqsa. Even the obvious should be pointed out to the listener, that the name of Jerusalem is not even once mentioned anywhere in the Quran. Jerusalem, on the other hand, is mentioned 667 times in the Bible. This alleged event is described in Bukhari Hadith 1.345 and it says, Gabriel took Muhammad by hand to the first heaven, where there is no mention of Jerusalem. Bukhari Hadith 5.227 and 4.429. Gabriel and Burak go to the first heaven. Again, there is no mention of Jerusalem. Bukhari Hadith 9.608. Gabriel took Muhammad by hand to the first heaven. Yet once more, there is no mention of Jerusalem. The explanation of this ayah or verse is found first and foremost in the only biography of Muhammad written by Muhammad ibn Ishaq in his book, Sirat Rasulullah. He informs us with great honesty on the authority of Muhammad's premier wife, Aisha, that his body never left her side and that he was only transported spiritually. This is corroborated by the Qarawiyun library manuscript in Fez, Morocco, where it repeats that Aisha, the Prophet's wife and most intimate companion of his later years, declared emphatically that he was transported in his spirit, biruhihi, while his body did not leave its place. Also, the great Al-Hasan al-Basri, who belonged to the next generation, held uncompromisingly to the same view. In another version, in section 267, page 184, it is Hind, Umhani, daughter of Abu Talib, Muhammad's cousin and sister of Ali, that relates concerning the night journey. The apostle went on no night journey except while he was in my house. He slept that night in my house. He prayed the final night prayer and he slept and we slept there. A few traditions assert that myths may have been a physical ascent as affirmed by Bukhari Hadith 5.228 narrated by Ibn Abbas, which says, the sites which Allah Apostle was shown on the night journey when he was taken to Beit al-Maqdis, Jerusalem, were actual sites, not dreams. Whose version should one trust? That of the wife who slept with him or of his companions who were not present. Neither the Quran, which did not allow for a single miracle to be performed, nor Muhammad ever declared that it was a miracle. The most damning and damaging evidence against this concocted story is the historical and incontrovertible fact that there was no masjid, mosque, or temple of Solomon in Jerusalem at the time of Muhammad. Since this temple, had already been destroyed by the Romans at least 580 years earlier. Hence the verse could not possibly and realistically have meant Jerusalem. It was the companions of Muhammad who, after his death, expressed the erroneous, falsified and unsubstantiated opinion, and later the dogma, by creating a mythology, assuming a real physical transport to Jerusalem, in spite of the fact that not one of the ahadith above mentions any intermediate landing at Jerusalem, but a direct flight from Mecca to the first heaven only. On the other hand, it makes more sense to assume 
that this was a spiritual transport to the temple of Allah in heaven. This tradition too would have been a copy from the Jewish traditions regarding Jacob and Moses visiting the seven heavens.